Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. Welcome to Real Magic Review. And today I'll be talking about The End by Angelo Carbone. Before we do this, please like and subscribe if you want to like it and you want to subscribe to it. And of course, check out onlinemagic.co. That's my membership site. We have special guests. Last week we had Axel Hecklau teaching Gypsy Thread, which was joyous. Um, and loads of other people and me every week. And on top of that, you get 900 plus tutorials of cards, coins, ropes, a uh, whole course on the Royal Road to Card Magic, how to practice, all that kind of stuff. So have a look at that, onlinemagic.co. This is a book test. And uh, why would we need a new book test? <laughs> We've got loads of book tests. But I was intrigued when Angelo came out with this. And this has been out for a while now. Because Angelo, as he says, usually is into kind of gimmicks and gadgety tricks. He's a very, very clever thinker. So I was thinking, what can he do with this? Is it going to be this really intricate thing um, that's going to be impractical? Not that his stuff's impractical, but I couldn't think of how the things I've seen him do could fit into a book test. And I love his stuff, as you will know. Uh, and I find it all incredibly usable and, uh, and very special indeed. So this I was surprised at because what it does is it takes the idea, as he says, he loves the mother of all book tests, the principle in that many of you will know, and adds one change which seems quite subtle and I suppose is, but makes a huge, huge difference. And I don't want to go too much into method. I know that everybody watching this is a magician, you know, but it, it just... But you'll know if, if you know your stuff. And um, and even if you don't know much of your stuff, you'll probably know the method behind a lot of book tests. So there's a thing that happens at the front, usually, quite early on in a word. <laughs> That's rubbish at doing this. Um, and he just sort of flips it around and, and puts it to the back. Let's say that. Puts it to the background. That's clever, isn't it, to say that? Makes no sense. What that does, I'll tell you what it does rather than trying to explain in rubbish code that a two-year-old could figure out. It gives you an out that means you turn a miss into a hit, so you never get a miss. And with the mother of all book tests and, you know, the, what was that Necronomicon? It wasn't called that, but something like that. The, the sort of cheaper version that a lot of people have with two books. What that does is you, you can either give it a go and get it wrong and then correct yourself, or there are many clever methods of doing it which kind of cover it up. And it's great, but this does genuinely feel safer to do because you never even get close to a miss, really. Um, and by the end of it, they'd have kind of forgotten that kind of near miss thing that you did. It's really clever and it feels totally different to do. So he's made this as a hands-off, I've got a few of them here, a hands-off, book test where they take the book like mother of all book tests and they can do the whole thing just with the book or if you're going to be performing this on stage and you want to have a longer routine you can get three of them which opens up a whole world of possibilities so you know he talks about the Anne Cram book test where you basically take one book actual book um someone has a the the non the end book and you have three other ones and you've got all this freedom where they can choose books. And the routine that I did was um, someone had that book. Uh, two more people chose one of these each and I had one. And we, you'll see on the footage that I put on here. There's a book called um, oh, Dancing with Einstein or something like that. I can't remember, but it's about memory. People that do memory stuff. You know, people that can shuffle a deck of cards. Yeah, yeah. And, and, that, and they always claim that they don't have to have a good memory. It's a technique. So because I've got ADHD, I've got a terrible memory. So I've been working on a technique like mem memory palace, loads of different ways of kind of creating imagery. So you remember the imagery better than you do, but you can't just remember a load of cards. Yeah, yeah. So you create this kind of journey through it. So and another way of memorizing books. So you, you've read it, haven't you? So I won't give you that one. You take any, uh, okay, well, you take, a few of hers. take any two. Do you want that one? Yeah. Right, so uh, first one, we're going to do is I'll go through like this and you say stop. Stop. Okay. Hang on. God. 
177. Right, so open page 177. Make sure I can't see it. All right. Uh, don't look at anything yet. Have a look at the top few lines. Okay. 77 pigs. So, right, I'm going to try and... Uh, Look at the top line and imagine what's going on. Yeah. I'm not actually write anything down yet. Have you got 77 pigs? There's something to do about a pig, but there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a kind of mix between the, there's something weird about it. I remember the 77 pigs, 77 pigs in a sauna. So, so there's um, something to do with a, a basting pig, it's a big bean based. Oh, there, there's like a two word thing. Someone's going to say something and they say something else, and it's like basting, but it's bass. It's, it's like an expletive. It's, yeah. They're going to say, it's a basting pig, it's a bast pig. It's like you bast pig. <laughs> and then there's a sauna and there's a, and a, the, the angry pig. Uh, and there's two emotions, two negative emotions, and they're mixing between the two, but they're similar emotions, though, between rage and anger or something like that. So it's bast pig, rage, despair, and uh, someone wishes they were in a sauna, or is there a sauna, is that right? That's all correct, yeah. Uh, read the top line. Look, you power mad bast pig. That's it. I pleaded, alternating between rage and despair. There's nothing wrong with me. I only came here for the saunas and the massage. Yay, right, great. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Wait, so you, in your head, you were like looking through a corridor and you saw that line? Yeah, 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 That's yeah. That's mental. So stop again. Stop. Okay, and have a look at there. You've got the one four three. Um, one four three, yeah. Literally just opened here. You got it. Yeah. Uh, so there's a. Oh, this is harder. Uh, one four three, one four three. Come and give me a call on one four three. Give me a call on one four three. Uh. I'm not going to get the whole line or anything, but there's some there's someone's name and it's an unusual name, Tashi T Toshi something. Um, but and the, there's not a lot going on in the line. I think it's the only thing I can remember is something something about a, a ring. Okay, so there's, there's a Toshi Toshi Hiru or Toshi Haru and a ring, and that's on one four three. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so uh, then you. You can do it yourself, actually. Go through and stop anywhere you want, but just look at the page number. Yep. What's the page number? 220. Go on page 220. That's incredible. That is insane. <laughs> and insane. and right, uh, think, give me a big word of six or more letters and don't tell me. Just think of one and close the book. Of six or more letters? Yep. Big interesting word. Got one? Yeah. Okay. Think of the word. Uh, I think I saw about where you were looking. Uh, close the book. Uh, right. So uh, I'm going to try and write this down. Uh, think about the... the we'll, no, we won't go for the beginning letter. We'll go for the end letter. Um, end letter isn't... Ah, oh, is that right? No. What was the end letter? P. Why am I getting an R? Uh, oh, oh, no, no, because uh, there's a, there's a, the second but turned letter's an R. Yeah. Right, okay, so we've got... Right, okay, I've got it. I think. It's an unusual word, isn't it? Um, say what the word was? Super sharp. Ah, so it's super sharp. No way. What? <laughs> there you go. Oh That's God. incredible. That is insane. Hey, thanks a lot. I, I just... Yeah, unbelievable I mean... that. <laughs> wow. Now, the routine I did, I was kind of busking my way through it, and I think part of the reason I put this off for so long is because I was quite nervous about doing it. There's a lot going on, and I couldn't find... I wanted to have four people that were kind of in a relaxed atmosphere, so just going into the cafe is a bit weird because everybody's going to turn around and look. So I went into an office, did it with uh, three people, sorry, and when I sort of got into it, I just really, really enjoyed it. And you understand that once you have the principle in your head, you can kind of improvise around it and find your own way of doing it. So my routine was based on the Al-Quran test, which Angelo has shared on the Facebook group, 
a couple of things I wasn't too into with that and I wanted to kind of shorten it a bit even though my routine went on for ages. And I did a, I wanted to do it as a memory test because I've been reading a lot about memory at the moment. A lot of my stuff is about, you know, thinking you're not going to be very good at something because of the kind of conditioning you've had. Um, so I said, I was, you know, I could never do puzzles as a kid, so I thought I wouldn't be able to do a Rubik's Cube. And with this, you know, my memory is terrible because of ADHD. So I've read a book called um, Moonwalking with Einstein, which I wrongly said in the performance, Dancing with Einstein. Um, that said that anybody can do it and it's not actually people with good memories. So I kind of used that as the framing for it, which meant I could relax into this whole idea of kind of thinking about it, trying to remember, remember things and using almost real memory palace techniques to, to kind of get to where I wanted to go, which I really enjoyed and it made me feel better than doing I'm going to read your mind with these books. Nothing wrong with that. It's lovely and I've done that many times, but this gave me a kind of grounding and also an excuse to kind of fumble a little bit if I was struggling because you know the first time you perform anything it's not very easy so I'm saying that because for those people who always say you know memory work and I struggle with this and that this is really really easy now you have got to remember 24 I think words or it could be 23 or maybe even 22 but he gives you a mnemonic that is so brilliant and the second I he, I kind of read this in the instructions. I kind of went, I've got, and I could remember nearly all of them. And then I used a memory palace technique just because I wanted to practice it and remembering the rest. And within five minutes, I knew the words. If you don't want to do that, there is a crib involved, a pen crib that goes on a Sharpie or a different pen that I, I'm totally happy to use. I used to be quite sniffy about using cribs and now I'm all over it. I'm like, I'm going to do anything that gets me out of trouble if I kind of have a brain fart. Uh, which is brilliant. They're not going to see it. I had it out there in full view and nobody picked up on anything. So, you know, you've got five minutes of material here with uh, one book or more with other books. And it's just open to so many interpretations. So he's written this whole thing himself as a book. And he did kind of research it, get it proofread, you know, write a whole story that makes sense. The words of six letters or more are all words that aren't overcomplicated. Sometimes, you know, you read a book test and there's these really big complicated words and actually they're normal words. And some of them are really abnormal, which makes it more convincing. So there's a name in there that, that is quite odd. And there's, there are words in there that are kind of almost slang words. And you go, yeah, that's great because that's how people talk. So it, it, it makes it a little bit more convincing. Now I'm not saying, the mother of all book tests and similar aren't convincing and I've seen people perform them beautifully but for me this is it's just brilliant and you know when he sent me this and I started looking through it quite a long time ago I enjoyed the process of learning it and and thought yeah this is something I can do that kind of fits in with me if you want to get more than one book of course it's going to cost you more but with it you get the crib you get the instructions the script really important really really important script and he tells you what not to do now in the performance i did there were a few things i got wrong that i shouldn't have said that would have made it more convincing but that's what we do when we perform something the first time we go oh i did that thing i shouldn't have done that and that's why i'm going to kind of share that with you it's a first ever performance and it's a flawed performance but look at the responses and interestingly there were long periods where i wasn't doing anything when i was trying to think and they were kind of into it you know they were in an office so someone had to look at their phone for a second um but i interrupted their day but you know the response of every bit of that was a strong more strong that than i expected it would be and made me think i'm definitely taking this i've got a parlor show on thursday on friday i'm definitely doing it without a doubt it's brilliant i love all my tech and all that kind of stuff but i love doing something that just relies on me so I can kind of work my way through it and not have to rely on anything else. They look good as well. Now, this is important. Now, some book tests, if you really look at them, don't look like any kind of book. Some do, but these do genuinely look like books that you would get out of the shop. And he's got lots of different styles, uh, lots of different sizes. There's a small one you can carry around and walk about. And I would do this walk about. I think, you know, single book tests are great for walk about. Um, and of course, the idea of having all the different styles means that when you've got the different books on stage and people pick one, you can start mixing them up. So that's The End by Angelo Carboni. Thank you, Angelo, for sending this to me. I've really enjoyed it. I'm definitely performing it uh, in my show on Friday. And it terrifies me, but there's nothing like it. It's a great feeling when you take out new stuff. So I'm excited. Uh, and I like the whole memory thing. I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of that. Not mine, of course. Loads of people have done it, but, uh, but it suits me, which is a nice feeling. 
Have a great one. Take care. Go and have a look at onlinemagic.co. Use the links below if you're interested in it. And any questions, stick them in the comments below. Take care.